Greg Scroll, are you? Executive Director, Committee for Human Rights in North Korea, HRNK. We had about 35 RSVPs today. This is a very special event. I'm very grateful to all of you who are here. I know it's a tough time. I know it's July. Uh, everyone is out of DC on vacation. Hot weather, humid weather, Canadian forest fires. I know it's not easy. With that said, um, let me begin by thanking my colleague Raymond Ha, our Director of Operations and Research for um, putting together this event. Let me thank all of my colleagues, uh, Lauren Chong, and everybody else for um, working on putting this event together. This is a very important week, marking a very important, I won't say anniversary, I will say commemoration. July the 27th, this coming Thursday, is the 70th commemoration of the Korean War Armistice. Uh, there is a lot to celebrate in South Korea, the world's 11th largest economy. I know I checked this morning, I wrote a, a, a column for Breaking Free Asia. Um, the world's 11th largest economy, a uh, true success story. Man, I'm resting here in the audience. We'll take about K-pop and K-culture, she knows it inside out. Um, such a successful country on so many levels, and yet the two Koreas remain separated. Uh, it's been a very long time since 1948, but if you think about it, think of Germany. The German Confederation was created after the Congress of Vienna in 1815, after the Napoleonic Wars, then in 1834 came the Zollverein, the, uh, the customs unions. We had some level of political unification, some level of economic unification. Barely 130 years later, the two Germanys were separated again, east and west. And then finally, um, in 1990, uh, 45 years later, they were unified. Well, the Korean story is different prior to separation the two Koreas and Koreans shared the same culture, the same history, the same language, and lived under the same political system for 1,000 years. That is a very long time. That's one minute. So the argument that I, I would like to make, and I make it sometimes, is that two Koreans, reunification is not a matter of choice. It's a matter of destiny. And here at HRNK, we document, research, investigate the North Korean human rights situation and argue that respect for human rights, democracy, economic, political, social reform on the northern half of the Korean Peninsula will be the preconditions for preparing for unification. Now, one aspect that we don't really look at is unification from music. And uh, Mr. Won Kyung Jun, our distinguished uh, violinist and speaker today, has a very, very special take on uh, inner Korean dialogue, inner Korean unification. So he's here to share his musical genius with us and also to give a lecture. I'm going to ask my colleague Raymond Han to introduce our distinguished speaker and also to moderate the event. I will be delighted to, um, to join Mr. Wong as a co-panelist after he gives his lecture. So thank you for being here and uh, enjoy the show and the program. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you once again for joining us today. And I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Mr. Wong Young Jun. Uh, Mr. Won is a South Korean violinist celebrated for his musicianship and his, and his activism. A child prodigy, he performed solo with the Seoul Philharmonic Orchestra at just 10 years old. He has won numerous competitions, including the Kingsville International and the New York Philharmonic Festival. Trained at the Juilliard School, Mr. Won performed at the World Economic Forum in 1990, which celebrated the reunification of Germany. And this event inspired him to think of music as a medium of reconciliation. In 2019, he held two historic joint concerts with the North Korean soprano Song Mi Kim 
at the Oriental Art Center in Shanghai, and also at the Musical Liska in Stockholm. Mr. Wong currently serves as the musical director of the Lindenbaum Festival Orchestra in Korea, and also as the chief representative of Sound Group. He is an honorary member of Kirkland House at Harvard University and an international chair of the Cinema for Peace Foundation in Germany. Uh, we'll be starting today's event with a short performance by Mr. Wong. Uh, please join me in welcoming to the stage.
Thank you very much for that beautiful performance. I would ask you for an encore, but we also might have to so, <laughs> I, I think we will get started with the lecture right away. Hello, thank you for coming, and thank you for inviting me to HRK. I'm very honored. So today, as you saw my performance, but more importantly, I'm here to uh, let you know about North Korean classical music. So 2019, May 12th, in Shanghai, China, I was able to perform with one of the North Korean soprano. Her name is Song Lee Kim. Um, she went to Pyongyang Conservatory, and after that, she also went to uh, Moscow Conservatory for two years. So until I met and performed together, I didn't know about any uh, North Korean uh, classical music, how they play and what the levels. But um, as you see, later, I'm going to show the link. Um, they're very extraordinary. And uh, the next joint concert held in uh, Stockholm, Sweden which was September 22nd, uh, same year. And uh, we played um, the, some other piece. Uh, and so right now, um, I, the left is the actually article uh, written by uh, AP. And, and the, the right one is a poster that I played with the Song Kim in Stockholm. So can you, yeah. Show the first link. So, the piece we played together with the orchestra was um, uh, uh My mother taught me, the songs my mother taught me. Uh, it was especially requested by Chinese orchestra uh, conductor, Kao Peng. He's, he's very old. And he's a, a legendary conductor in China. I, I think he's now in, uh, he's uh, older than 95, something like that. And because the, it was the day uh, just before uh, Chinese Mother's Day, so uh, they kind of asked us if we can play something in a meaningful uh, program. So we chose to play the uh, the songs my mother taught me. And then, and then you saw uh, he, uh, her playing Arirang. And uh, yeah, we had a rehearsal together and the uh, majority audience was Chinese, but uh, that was the first uh, ever uh, joint concert uh, uh, happened in my life. So if I explain just briefly, you know, the, the reasons and what uh, motivated me to do this uh, you know, historical joint concert, it was because uh, my grandfather uh, came to South Korea during the Korean War in 1950. You know, and uh, um, he stayed in South Korea, he had to. And, and, and his uh, mother, who is my grand grandmother, uh, who died, and, and my grandfather never, uh, was never able to see her uh, you know, after the war. In, and still, um, there is a tomb, my grand grandmother's tomb in Kaesong, which I cannot, uh, you know, go there to see my ancestor because you know it's not the travel is not allowed. So I was always long for how I can um, visit to see my ancestor, uh, and I was thinking and you know trying to figure out, and then I was able to meet the story of Daniel Baran you know, who is a um, conductor. And you know he he's doing it's called East West Divan Orchestra where the uh, Palestine and uh, you know Israel youth are uh, together in an orchestra and he started that project since I think uh, 1991 so I was very much inspired by uh, what he was doing if there's East and West why not North and South so I started this uh, you know uh, ambitious project and you can see that our second joint concert how. Uh, uh, in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. So this was uh, kind of special because after our you know first doing concert in Shanghai, um, uh, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in, in Sweden 
they kind of organized and they invited us. And you know, Song Mi Kim from North Korea, she, you know, are not allowed to travel outside of uh, the North Korea, but it was, uh, you know, thank to the Swedish government that they gave a Schengen visa, special Schengen visa to Song Mi Kim to travel to uh, Stockholm. And it's a funny uh, story. After the concert, there were uh, many, you know, Korean communities. They came to see our concert, uh, but they didn't know who the North and the South, uh, and, and, and majority uh, people came to me and oh, so Mr. Wan, you were from North Korea. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, yeah, so this Ariana, you already saw her uh, singing, you know, two times. So we have uh, many versions of Ariana, like, it's like, uh, you know, we have like different versions of music, for example, classic music, we also have a jazz music, we also have a pop music, uh, you know, folk song, everything, um, you know, belongs to music, but there are some different genres. So we do have a uh, different uh, versions of Aria. And, um, and, and I also was able to learn the styles and the versions of Aria from North Korea. And if I recall, the first time I ever um, encountered the existence of uh, North Korean Aryan was when New York Philharmonic, uh, you know, had visited Pyongyang. It's pretty much amazing because it, it's written by a North Korean composer, uh, and if you listen, how beautiful, you know, it was composed and written. And after after the New York Philharmonic performed, and you know, this Aryan, um, you know, was able to spread out. So after that. Many uh, orchestras from South Korea they started to perform this Aryan version. I wonder if he, you know, lived. You know, why not? You know, Hollywood, you know, ever you know, call him to write, you know, do a, you know, maybe you know, movie, music, something like that. Anyway, um, so so during New Philharmonic visit to Pyongyang, um, you know, as you see, the concert master was Glenn Dictor. You know, he actually he's uh he's my teacher uh, from Julia. I, I I remember, <laughs> uh, you know, he um, had emailed to me before his departure to Pyongyang. He wrote me, uh, Hyungjun, I'm so scared. I might that I, I I might be dead <laughs> <laughs> because it was uh, you know first time ever to visit uh, you know Pyongyang. But anyway, um, so you don't see what other activities New Philharmonic members did after this performance, but uh, I, I heard some of the episodes from my teacher. He also gave some master class with the North Korean young students. It's quite interesting that you know, some of the North Korean kids, uh, young performers, uh, after you know, playing their beautiful uh, melodies, and when a uh, person asked him, um, so do you know Juilliard School? Do you want to learn from that school? It's very famous in America. And you know, all they're saying is no, 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 no. We do have a great teachers in Pyongyang. And you know, although they're saying that, it's it's because um, we, we all know that if they say, oh yes, I want to go to America to you know learn, and, and <laughs> they're going to uh, get very risk. But anyway, uh, we we are able to see how enthusiastic their willingness to learn this classical music, which actually derived from Western culture. And, you know, this is very strange that even North Korean, they're, they're still learning and they're trying to adopt. Um, because I know from my uh, experience that they're inviting good teachers to North Korea and they're uh, trying to have, uh, you know, good music books, and that's all because they want to learn. And, and, and I'm sure they have ears, they have hearts. So, you know, you already saw their plan, their, how, you know, good they are. And there's another episode, my teacher, uh, he told me that, you know, we can see how um, North Korean, they're, they're trying to be uh, not second prize, I mean, you know, they're, they're trying to demonstrate, you know, they're as good as New Philharmonic members by saying that. And there was a, um, you know, chamber music concert at 
just before the May concert, you from you know playing this Dvorak and Arya, and my teacher was supposed to you know play Mendelssohn up that with uh, with the members of Pyongyang Philharmonic. So four members from New York Philharmonic and four members from Pyongyang Philharmonic, and of course we have to have rehearsals, right? You know, otherwise uh, we can't have a good uh, the, the result for the concert. So my teacher. Uh, was guided by North Korean soldier and you know went to room and you know he expect was expect okay the rehearsal but when guy was you know opening the door it was like concert hall with you know thousand people they sit it and there was on the stage you know four empty chairs and four you know North Korean musicians already sit it and and my teacher and the rest of uh, New Flamingo members said you know we we haven't had a rehearsal and. We can just perform right now, and they said, "Oh, we're ready. We're ready to perform." So, you know, as a result, they played without without having rehearsal. But it was very good enough to listen. So, I think this episode definitely tells, like, the interview from you know North Korean performer, young performers, that how they're good, how they, you know, how uh, they're prepared, and you know, they're ready to play. Play instantly with the members of New Philomony. By doing that, you know uh, their classical music are not as bad as you know uh, New Philomony members. So I think that was kind of uh, uh, you know some uh, ceremony that they're trying to fight against you know American by doing that. So from my personal experience of doing this, you know, doing a concert between North and South Korea. Uh, I started this uh, uh, in 2009, and really I had a, a lot of difficult times because at that time it was not a good uh, relations between two Koreas. So um, after you know many uh, obstacles and difficulties, anyway, I was able to accomplish this joint you know concert in Shanghai. So I realized um, by doing that. How we can uh, establish, we call trust, you know, by doing this classical music, you know, uh, musical dialogue. Although it happened in Shanghai and um, Stockholm, I think of why not, you know, we can promote a joint concert in here, Washington DC or New York City. It could be a, a very, you know, good the venues for having this historical movement. And then this document I wanted to really show to you because um, whenever I uh, say about the project and people don't believe how difficult it is to do uh, even it's a musical dialogue. Uh, I'm a South Korean citizen and we, in Korea, we have a law, it's called the National Security Law that if any citizen from South Korea wants to contact with North Korea, we must uh, file and we must get approved officially by the government. And this is the first document that we have to write down. And the Ministry of Unification in Korea, they you know, kind of approve or disapprove whether I'm able to contact and meet with North Korea. So the first I still remember the first time I, you know, tried to file these uh, documents, um, and and of course on the purpose of musical dialogue, dialogue with North Korean. But I was very much surprised that you know the first section there's like a blanks that I have to write down the person whom I want to meet with in North Korea. But you know I never been in North Korea in my life. I never ever went to North Korea, I don't have any relationship with North Korean uh, people, but how am I able to write down the person, you know, whom I'm going to meet with, and and more than that, I we have to write also the information about the person, the age, and what's his name or her name, and where he lives, and what's his or her title, and what uh, how you are um, connected to this person. So those questions without answering, you know, you cannot be approved. I think that's kind of um, the first, I would say nonsense. I mean, if anyone from South Korea wants to contact, of course, with a good purpose, good reasons to contact with North Korea. 
And that's first obstacle you're facing with, you know, to write down the right information. And also, if let's say I, you know, completely write in writing everything, and and, and the next uh, thing is that the government uh, must approve, and it's not like a one page. They're like really like this thick documents that I need to write everything, you know, the purpose and why you're doing this and your background. It's really a lot of uh, uh, you know, written uh, requirements. And of course, um, if, if uh, South Korean government approves, then North Korean government also uh, approves it. Like my concert with the Sony Kim, it was possible because you know, both governments approved that they approved that our joint concert. Even one side uh, approves, you know, it's possible that the other disapprove, then the joint concert will not happen. And also we have uh, uh, other circumstances, something like a political you know, situations. If North Korean launches missile, even two Korean governments, let's say, approve the, uh, whatever the uh, uh, joint concert, then uh, probably my uh, South Korean government, uh, you know, will call me, Mr. One. You know, North Korea they launched me, so maybe it's kind of dangerous. You should not, you know, leave it. So we we also have this kind of political uh, obstacles as well. And and I still remember uh, the episode uh, which happened to us just before our first uh, Shanghai Joint Concert. Uh, our concert was May twelfth. And it was May 9th, I believe, North Korea did launch the second missile, blasting missile. And, you know, everyone, including my family in Korea, they thought, okay, so this concert will not happen because, you know, North Korea did launch the missile. But uh, I think we had a kind of trust, you know, with Song Mi Kim and I. You know, uh, she, said right after the first video, so Mr. Wood, I might get a phone call from Pyongyang, you know, um, maybe we, we will not able to have a, a, you know, this joint concert. We uh, appreciate, um, you know, inviting me. So if I want to say something at last word, I, like I said, uh, I really hope, you know, we, we, we see a North Korean musician here in the States. I know there are some you know, political obstacles and issues. If um, if that happens, I think it would be very beautiful, I would say, because, you know, I can see how, how they want, because I, I personally talk to these North Korean, you know, people, and they really, really want to learn. And although they said, you know, they have good years already, but I can see their feelings, and I can see their um, enthusiastic, you know, feeling, you know, how they want to come even in the States to learn and meet with other people. So if we can, you know, try and if we can help and, uh, and, and I think near in the future, we will be able to see their performing here. And I really hope that happens. Thank you. Thank you everyone once again for joining us this afternoon. Um, please, uh, if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to um, have some already, we have uh, plenty of coffee and tea and pastries right over here. Please help yourselves. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wallace, again for your beautiful performance and your, your lecture. We'll continue to uh, cheer you on with your efforts to um, use your musical talents for the reconciliation of the two countries. Thank you very much.